Hi everyone, welcome to a new challenge idea. Terraria, but you're a golf ball. Now, as much as I wish that made sense at first glance, let's break down what exactly that means. So you know how they added golf to Terraria a little while ago? I honestly never played it, but I'm told that you can equip various golf clubs and use the mouse to launch the ball. The aim of the game is to move this golf ball into the hole using the fewest strokes possible. Now try imagining if you were, in fact, the ball. By installing the Golf Player Movement mod by QD Molly, your dreams have already started to come true. Now do not adjust your screens everyone, that golf ball is me. I cannot move using W, A, S and D, but I do have access to a golf club straight off the bat. Using this golf club, I can click anywhere on the screen and I'll be shot in that general direction. The further away the mouse is, the greater the power of the shot. Luckily, we started with a driver, which has the greatest horizontal strength at the cost of height, which would be ideal for early game traversal looking for materials. Naturally, my first instinct is to try breaking into this overgrown tree, but I keep overshooting because of the bounciness of both wood and grass. After getting so much of this mediocre loot, I then try and test out my offensive capabilities. It is becoming painfully clear to me that moving and attacking at the same time is off the table, at least for now. I venture over to the east to see if there's an easy way past that didn't involve scaling two trees, and I found a desert. I was excited to explore up until I landed directly on the sand, stopping me in my tracks. It doesn't take a golf expert to know that sand is the enemy of any prospective golf player and should be avoided at all costs. Getting lucky on a few shots to the west, I managed to break into this big tree, which will score us some lead and allow us to traverse further underground. Before I do that though, I start building a house from wood to better situate myself in this crazy new world. I start laying out some wood flooring, but after a little messing around, I scrap the whole floor and get some sand. I wanted to utilize the stopping power of the sand to make moving around my crafting station slightly more bearable. Until I get my magic storage, I'll just have to play ball. As the sun sets, the initial house is completed. I craft doors only to barricade them for the coming night. Almost immediately, I get bored of waiting for the night and head to the tree to get underground. I can't drop through platforms, so I'll have to mine them to delve downward. I get some more average loot and proceed further downward. In the cave below, I manage to almost get completely lodged in a pool of water. Attempting to knock yourself out is pointless, as the water absorbs almost all of the momentum you generate. A swing from this tired old driver is just about good enough to get you one block higher and nothing else. Eventually managing to free myself, I land right back in the water again. So this pool's a little bit different. I can't see anything and there's no obvious way out, so I swallow my pride and also a recall potion, to which there is no effect. Now, if I had read the workshop page for the mod, I would know that I can't be teleported anywhere. I would have also learned that my hair color changes the ball color too. What do you know? A strict benefit of being a tiny golf ball is that the hitbox of the player is reduced to a single block, at least for collision purposes. There's still some crazy shenanigans regarding the breath holding and enemy damage hitboxes, but we just ignore that. I dig this one block wide mineshaft that allows me to get into the earth easily, and also doesn't let anything else come down with me. I manage to discover a cave system which gently guides me downward to find some materials. Now I have the ore excavator mod on so the mining process isn't as laborious as it would have been otherwise. Pots generally have some really good early game things in them, so one method I picked up is that I would launch myself with a golf club and then equip the pickaxe mid-flight and wildly swing as I bounce around the walls of the cave. It's very easy to get stuck in water while you're going downward, similar to any normal terraria world, but I get pretty lucky and I'm able to escape them. As I said before, the breathing hitbox is pretty weird and actually rests above the golf ball, so you can jam yourself in a wall like this and breathe and then continue downward. I continue on until I get stuck with this weird looking golf ball that immediately destroys me. Using my newly acquired resources, I am able to construct an iron. This golf club has a greater vertical loft component at the cost of less horizontal speed. I stick with my driver for now as I have no real desire to get any higher off the ground. I attempt to cross the desert which has a large oasis in it. The water combined with the sand at the bottom means we really can't get anywhere through it, but instead opt to build over it. This is another challenge in and of itself though, as the ball refuses to cooperate. 
I go back underground to quell my building rage and stumble across a glowing mushroom biome, which gives us quite a few resources, namely our first heart crystal. I find another, but I overshoot and plunge straight into the darkness. Venturing further and further, I stack up more and more resources. Before long, I'm happy with my delve and use the quit to menu trick to get home. Not having magic mirrors or recall potions doesn't have anything on basic game exploits. Using some silver bars, I upgraded my driver. We can all agree that it's not a waste of materials as there's a fundamental part that we're upgrading. It actually gives me the motivation I need to finish the bridge in the desert and I continue exploring to the east. This is all going well until I land in a small lake and refuse to worm my way out. Instead, I head west and scale the large tree, only to be met with another desert oasis. I was already playing for a while at this point, so I didn't want to remake the world. Instead, I was going to find a way around it. I begin building a tower that would allow me to gain enough height that I could just sail to where I needed to go. This proved a massive challenge as I couldn't really position myself to do anything useful. After 10 minutes of hard work, the tower was complete. It was just tall enough that I could launch myself out the top and land on the leaves of the overgrown tree. This is pretty good, but I find out that there's an even better way to get around. You may have noticed the entire time I've been using the golf club in a dragging type motion. I have no idea why, but I just felt like that's how it worked. It actually only requires a click on the screen. This means I can just spam it at a certain angle and I can float indefinitely. This really opens up my options for exploration, and I'm sorry to those who knew this already. I skim around the skies and find a sky island, giving me a lucky horseshoe. It's maybe the worst thing I could have asked for, as golf balls typically take no fall damage. I continue on to the west, where I run into a jungle and a corruption biome. Armed with a small stack of bombs, I attempt to unearth a shadow orb. I managed to get stuck in the crater the bomb makes, and since I can't mine the ebon stone to escape, I just have to accept my death with courage and blow myself up. I spend more time in the mines collecting what I can to gear up. I go underground in the jungle seeking something to make my life as a golf ball less miserable. The first chest I encounter underground actually contains a boomstick, which isn't the greatest weapon in the game, but actually will allow me to take on a boss. After dying in the deep jungle, I attempt to put together some lavish accommodation for any prospective tenants that wish to join my town. I struggle a lot with the more finicky movements building the roof and walls of the new houses. After 20 minutes, this is what we have. It ain't much, but it's honest living. After the gun dealer moves in, I'm able to purchase some ammo for my boomstick, allowing me to begin the setup to defeat a boss. I expand my launch tower on top of my house to accommodate a small arena, hopefully which would allow me to manoeuvre around easier without so much input. I delve underground again and amass enough life crystals to max out my health bar. I also stumble upon a great deal of ore, allowing me to craft some rudimentary armour and equip it. I also find out that there is now a recipe for the golf whistle, which when used causes the golf ball to return to its previous location before the most recent shot. This gives me a pretty good idea of how to fight the Eye of Cthulhu. I also stumble upon a Feather Fall Potion in my inventory, which actually works as one might think. Giving me the ability to fly in a pretty controlled manner, the agility it provides me is one thing, but as you can see here, I'm able to fire on enemies while I'm descending. My testing of the Feather Fall lasts the entire Slime Rain event, causing King Slime to appear and maul me senseless. But I had fun at least. In the lead up to the eye fight, I mess around in low earth orbit. It works pretty well, although we still lose quite a lot of horizontal momentum due to our low speed. During my movement testing, the Eye of Cthulhu naturally spawns and we begin fighting. I use my driver to launch myself away from it and then fire on it with a boomstick until it closes the distance. I wait as long as possible and then use the golf whistle repeating the cycle. As the eye enrages further, it dashes more and more often. I get less and less opportunities to unload on it, relying on the golf whistle to jump quickly out of the way. 
He catches my janky hitbox a few times and gets me very low. The eye sits on just a little over 100 health and I quickly whistle out of the way, nervously switching to my boomstick preparing to hit the final shot. He dodges my pathetic attempts and gets the final bite in, bringing me down to 10 HP, to which I react with a snapshot straight to the eye. It goes down and we claim our expert loot bag as our prize. Okay, wow, I never thought I would manage to get this far, but that's as far as I go today. If you would like to see a full playthrough of this challenge, please let me know by liking and commenting, and maybe even subbing. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!